Welcome to the third tutorial. In this tutorial, we will go through on how I created the dungeon repo. I prepared a subset of the repo for this tutorial. First, I will enable grid snapping and set them apart. Then, I will start by creating a block repo and nest the blocks under it. And of course, I need to add the block asset component to them. Then I, I will create a builder to test my connections. I also need to create an action group, just like the previous tutorial, called full y rotate. And now I will assign it to every block except the floor and the ceiling block. Then hit rebuild. Although we didn't make any connections, the blocks seem to be connected in the right way. Not only that, but the constraints are also working. Let's do a quick example. Let me constrain the boundary real quick and also constrain the volume to give us a room. This all happened thanks to filling. Let's change the editing mode to filling and see how it works. Once we enable the editing mode, we can see 8 circles on each corner of the selected block, similar to the marching cube if you are familiar with it. The green circle indicates where it's a solid, and the red one indicates where there it's empty. This will give auto level an, ap an approximation of volume. Auto level will generate the filling, but it's not guaranteed to give the correct result. That's why you have the ability to edit the filling using the filling editing mode. How auto level actually use these fillings? The filling have to have two major rules. First, they mask the connections. That means even if we try to connect the blocks by matching their IDs for some pair of opposite faces, they will not be connected unless they have a match filling for those faces as well. This block have a matching filling between the right and the left face. That's why it's styleable along the x-axis. And these two will connect together because they have a match filling. while these two are not. In the previous tutorial, we didn't need to care about the fill because all the blocks had a matching filling similar to the floor block. The second rule for the filling is they make the volume constraint using the empty and the solid group possible. All you need to do to make your block connect to the empty group is to have all four circles set to red for a given face and leave the face ID to zero. While for the solid group, set the four circles to green. Let's get back to the edit connections. I will use these blocks as a base and I will introduce the other blocks as we go. Although I'm not having any issue right now, I will reconnect these blocks manually to work as a base. I will start by setting the left, right, front and back ID for the floor block to 1 and for the ceiling block to 2 since they tile on the both Z and X axis. Then I will connect these two blocks to the floor block. I can drag the floor block to them to see that they match perfectly. I will do the same thing for the ceiling block. Now I will connect the middle column block to itself on the X axis since I want it to tile.
Then I will connect it to the kernel blocks. And I don't want the middle layer to tile, so I will make a unique connection between the middle and the bottom layer, and another unique connection between the middle and the upper layer. And finally, I want this corner to connect to this corner as such. And I want it to connect to this middle piece when it gets rotated. So they all, they all need to have the same ID. I will connect them quickly and I will do it for all the layers. And when we hit rebuild, nothing really changed except that the room height will always be three cell in height because I prevent tiling of the middle layer. Now let's introduce the broken floor. The broken floor blocks will have a unique connection between each other and will have the rest of their connections with the floor block. They need to show always together with that order. Now let's hit rebuild and see it in action. Now, what will happen if I wanted to get a rotated version of the broken floor? Let's add the action group to each block and hit rebuild. It did not behave as intended. They should not be connected in that way. That's why I need to introduce the big block. Big block is used for a collection of blocks that need to act as one big block. All we need to do is define a volume. In our case, we need it to be 2x2 two two on the ZX plane. Then we assign our blocks to the big block by left clicking. Then we assign the action group and that's it. Now we hit rebuild to have these rotated versions. Now, let's give another example on the big block. Let's hide the broken floor and enable these blocks that represent some kind of carpet that can appear across the room. These blocks aren't enough to define it. We need to create some variants. Then, let's create a big block to contain the carpet. You can also edit the external connections of the big block by changing the editing mode. I will connect it to our base set of blocks.
all looks good, but I want the carpet middle blocks to be tileable. I can achieve that by setting the middle blocks to be tileable as we did before. Please notice that the big block will maintain these internal connections. Now let's set the action group and hit rebuild again. That's it for this tutorial. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.